Hello, Gabriela and Gatan. Thank you so very much for being here. Gabriela is currently the artistic uh, director for the Malva Museum. And prior to that, she was the chief curator and visual arts um, director for America's Society. Uh, she has curated and co-curated numerous exhibitions on modern and contemporary art and uh, has written numerous uh, publications and books and texts. So thank you very much, Gabriela, for being with us here today. Uh, it's a real honor. Uh, Gatan Verna, on the other hand, uh, director of the Power Plant uh, Contemporary Art Gallery since uh, 2012, um, has also years uh, of experience in arts administration, publishing catalogs, curating international and local um, exhibitions uh, by uh, Canadian, also an international artist, and um, it's also president of the board of the directors of the Toronto Art Council. So Gaetan, thank you so very, very much for uh, being participant, collaborator, and such a good spirit uh, through all this uh, period that we're all going through in different parts of the world. And I'm so, again, grateful for this opportunity. are creatures that can adapt and so we're all learning to adapt to a situation that is um, really difficult and that um, uh, challenging and I think that for me what's been a, a big learning is that you know it feels like every day or every week there's something else that starts hitting you more personally so you know it's starting to though it's been a reality for all of us I think as the weeks and the months go by, it's something that's going to affect us more and more. And I think that it is our responsibility as, you know, leaders of institutions and people working with artists to figure out ways to, um, you know, to share, to, to uh, exchange, and then to, you know, think of how we're going to, I don't know, adapt to this new reality. And, you know, Personally, I just wanted to go back to my life as before, like everyone. But at the same time, I, I feel very privileged that, you know, I'm working, I have a home, uh, you know, my immediate family, everybody's healthy and my staff, everybody's healthy. So that's, that's what we're, and, and I would say, you know, that um, the government of Canada and Claudia can attest to this, you know, there's so many things being put in place in, in trying to support everyone equally, you know, and not to leave anyone in, in, in despair. But um, this will have an effect on everyone, the economy, health, and et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, once the fall rolls in. So that's my bit. So Gabriela, you're like, you know, at the other part of the, the Americas that I see as one continuous, you know, uh, place. So what is, um, how are things with you? Well, I'm in uh, official quarantine. Well, thank you, Claudia, for inviting, for inviting me and, and you, Ketan, for being uh, so uh, generous to share your time in this conversation. Uh, I really wanted to talk to you a long time ago. I think you're very, a very interesting person, I have to say. Oh. Uh, well, I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and the government uh, declared quarantine uh, two months ago. Uh, the museum was the first, our museum was the first to close. It was a decision that we, it was very difficult, but, but we decided to close the museum because we're, you know, providing security to people and um, it was not very popular, but then it became popular, our decision. Mm -hmm. And everybody, everybody else follow, follow up mm -hmm. or shutting down. So I've been at home working and I have to say that I'm like anybody else, you know, strong and weak, uh, focused and disoriented, uh, you know, um, pessimistic and optimistic. But basically I'm very focused and I've been, you know, uh, working hard in a project, doing research. And also thinking of the conditions that we have with this COVID-19, I lost people. I lost a very close friend who died three months ago, a very early uh, victim of COVID. And, and then yesterday we lost, two days ago, we lost a very important artist uh, from Brazil, uh, Abraham Palachnik, who was 92. 
and uh, it's been it's been a very um, a very strong uh, paradigm shift. Uh, but I have to say that having said this, that affects us. Mm -hmm. I think universally. I think we never had such a universal moment mm -hmm. in our in our world history uh, for pain or trauma, but. At the same time, we're privileged to see how history changes. Mm -hmm. So we're witnesses of something that it's, uh, you know, twisting the, the narrative to somewhere else. We don't know yet, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a change of paradigm. And also, I think COVID is a pharmacon, like the, the Greek word. It's, it's a remedy, but also it's a poison. Mm -hmm. So I think we learn a lot from remedies and poisons. And unfortunately, sometimes it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a trip to hell, but I think it's, I, something interesting will come up. I hope not, not very traumatic for, for mankind. Well, yeah, I think that uh, you, you really positioned it in such an incredible way because, um, you know, we've been closed since March 17, and I would say that we were but things shut down really quickly in Toronto once the government, you know, said, this is what you're doing. Um, and uh, we've been working extremely hard, um, very focused on publications, <laughs> you know, for some reason it feels like this is one of the areas where, you know, it's something tangible. You finish writing books, you produce the books and, and you, you try to, you know, push through hoping that once, we're on the other side and when we reopen that we've you know we've caught up on some of the work that we it's always difficult to to juggle on an everyday basis one of the thing that we've been because we're non-collecting which also is a difference between our institution um we just you know close down the show everything is safe and um and there are people taking care of the works to make sure that you know conditions are are, are good for the works um but in the, mean, in the meantime, because we have some uh, traveling exhibitions, a lot of our exhibition, it's like a domino effect, you know? So there's, there's been a lot of, um, you know, negotiation with our colleagues in order to extend exhibition and then postpone others. And for me, one of the things that's been really- Excuse me, which exhibition are you, are you traveling right now? So we have an exhibition in Van at the Vancouver Art Gallery of an Inuit artist called Shuvanai Ashuna. And so it's the first time that the Vancouver Art Gallery is showing an Inuit artist in the, I don't know, 100 or 150, I can't remember how old is the Vancouver Art Gallery. So this exhibition opened in March and it was supposed to finish in June. So now they've asked me if they could extend it until September because also, Canada is such a big country, depending on the province, some provinces are closer to reopening than, um, you know, uh, Ontario and Quebec, which are the most populated provinces. So we have this show there. In the meantime, we had another show of an artist called Alicia Henry, which was um, to be shown at the Art Gallery of, of uh, Nova Scotia, so in Halifax. And so they couldn't open it. And now they've asked us to postpone it to next summer because they really want to show it within the good condition for the artists, but also for the public. They really want their audience to be engaged with this. And then we had another show of, an, of um, a Senegalese artist called Omar Ba, which was supposed to start in Calgary. And now they've asked us if they could show it in September. So, you know, it's becoming this like jigsaw puzzle and a domino effect of all these, all of these things. And so, um, you know, that requires time and energy because you don't just email an artist to say, we're postponing a show, you know, you email, but then you call and then, you know, all of this communication becomes even more important because I would say that in a period of high stress for people, you cannot just throw things out like that. You need to be mindful and, and be very, um, you know, careful and, you know, added contracts and force majeure, 